national championship. So it was the meet before nationals. And I was just like, like, I just couldn't get these thoughts out of my head. I'm just like, why am I feeling this way? But then I like got myself back together, locked in. And I was like, hold on, like we've trained way too much to give up now. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And uh, as you all know, the focus of our show here is focus on helping student athletes succeed beyond their degree. And and today is is just like every other day, but except today we in the building, we got a we got a track star in the building. All right. We we got a track star in the building. Uh, so so without further ado, I mean we're gonna dive into the accolades. We're gonna dive into in, into into what our guest is doing today and has been doing. But without further ado, the track star, Miss Messiah Russell. How how we doing, Messiah? How we doing? I'm good. I'm great. You know, blessed to be here. Blessed to be a part of something so impactful. So I'm happy to be here and happy that I was chose to to be one of these individuals to talk about my experience. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's pretty it's, it's pretty dope because one 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 thing I, I I've seen just uh you know look, looking at some of your content and you know hearing hearing you come highly recommended one thing one thing I just want to give you your flowers on up front is like you seem like such a personable person right because we were connected you know by by way of Darcy Queen Khan shout out to her but you you just seem like a personable person and I guess that could be me just saying like you know because sometimes you know you see people on social media or wherever you see them and you don't think that they're going to be as personable. So I just want to give you those flowers and let you know that, you know, like I, I can see your heart in the YouTube videos and, and now even us having this dialogue today. So I just want to, you know, give you, give you those flowers up front. That means so much because that's literally like my goal, you know, of course, someone who has cloud or someone who has a lot of followers, like people have these like preconceived notions of just who they believe you are before actually beating you. So that means a lot. And I'm glad that I'm able to show who I am and show my true authentic self through just my content. Cause I know, I mean, there's no way that every of my followers is going to be able to meet me. So them just having that true authentic experience of who I am, that just means so much. So I'm glad that, that you said that it literally like put a smile on my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that, that's what's up. That's what's up. And then, let's just let's just start there right because i you know i've been i've been checking checking out your youtube content and like it, it's it seems like you have a real relationship like you're talking one-on-one -on -one to whoever the person is watching you know as you as you go through you know you're, you're doing you're doing your makeup routine you're getting ready you're, you're doing your shakeouts like when when did like like has that ha, has that been the way that you always shot your content or did you just realize like one day i'm just gonna shoot this thing and it's just gonna be me yeah, so I started YouTube when I came into college, and then of course, like I watched other YouTubers, so I kind of got like the gist of like how they went about recording their content. But I've always wanted to have that real personable relationship with whoever was watching it because when I watch certain YouTubers, I feel like I'm a part of what they're doing. So I always wanted to make my fans and followers feel like they're coming along with me on a track meet. They're coming along with me on this flight. They're coming along with me to do my makeup, to get ready for this meet. So I've just always wanted to have that connection. So it wasn't, it was like I looked and seen what other people did, but I just wanted to have that same authentic feel that other creators have done for me as well as with my followers. Yeah, that's, that's dope. That's dope. Who, so, so who are some of your, you know, like your favorite creators out there? Like, you know, where you, you like check out their content and everything like that. Anybody specific? So I just, yeah. So I literally just got big on like watching other people's vlogs, like actually watching people's vlogs because like, I'm, I don't really like have time to watch other people because I don't watch that much TV, but I have started watching like vlogs lately. I mean, of course, for like when I was younger, everyone watched like De'Aaron and Ken. Like, so I watched them a little bit, but now I watch Monet McMichael, Mc, yeah, something like that. She's like really big on TikTok, and I've started to watch her like YouTube videos. I like literally love her content. And then I have another friend who's also a Gymshark athlete. Her name is Libby Christensen. We're actually friends, but it's just cool when you actually get to know these people, and then you just start to see like how their lives are on a day-to-day -day basis. So those are the two people that like I mainly watch. And then I just watch a couple people like hair tutorials and, you know, track videos, things like that. But the two vloggers that I watch is Monet and my friend Libby. Shout out to Monet and Libby. Shout, shout out to them. Shout out to them. But yeah, like seeing your, uh, see, like seeing your routine, 
I can tell that you know that that you're pretty versed with the products, you know, doing the the whole and then yeah. <laughs> I so, try. I try. I'm trying to step up my YouTube game. I know we just hit 30,000 subscribers. So we're growing on that platform much more. I've been super consistent on there, so I'm looking to grow that even more within just this year and, you know, keep building up on that. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, Cause yeah, you in your content creation bag though. You 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 in there? You in there for sure? Uh, wow, that's a lot. I'm trying, man. You know, I have a little more time on my hands now that like school is not super um, demanding. So that's just been a goal that I wanted to to do and pick up this year because a lot of my fans, especially on YouTube, they've been real, real, real patient when it comes to me posting videos. Like I used to post a video like every month, every three months, just like kind of when I felt like it. So now I've been posting like every single week and I can just tell that like my followers are starting to get way more engaged. Like my subscribers are growing and, you know, I'm just building that relationship with them. Yeah, most definitely. Are, are you the one who edit? Like, do you edit all your videos? Are you got like someone? No way. You're not serious. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's why like I tell all my like followers and stuff like especially like when I was really heavy in school, I'm like, Y'all, just be patient with me. Like, I am a full-time student athlete, like, who is really grinding on a track and trying to get videos So you guys, so just be patient. So now, like I said, I have a little more time on my hands, which is why I'm able to post a little more on YouTube. And it's because, like I said, school isn't as demanding. But, yeah, I do edit all my videos. And I've gotten, like, way better with editing in the past, shoot, couple months. <laughs> but, yeah, I do everything myself. Yeah, Lee. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm a working. I'm a working woman. Man. On yeah. and on. Dang. That's, that's my little slow. I'm 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 here for it. I'm I'm here for it. Okay. Okay. So let's so let's rewind this thing back because I was watching some of your videos and I saw that you said you've been at this track thing. You've been running since you were eight years old. You've been running since you was eight, and and, and, I, and I just want to just want to parallel this to some, something that, that like I've seen because oftentimes I've seen people uh, or, or I've seen really gifted athletes at a young age, but then like five ten years down the road, like they burn out or they they leave the sport, they just done with it completely. So how did you continue to keep working at the craft and keep staying consistent from eight to college? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say it's been all peaches and cream because it, it hasn't. I mean, of course, like going from eight all the way up into my junior year in college, like I never questioned my love for track like at all. It's just because it was always something that I was good at. It's always something I enjoyed to do. It's just like when I went to track practice, it's like nothing else mattered. And my parents never had to force me to go either. That's the thing. It's just like when your parents like force you to do something, if they want it more than you, then like it, they're already checked out. So I was always like super excited to go to practice and just love to be just running you know just being a part and then of course when I started to pick up hurdles like I picked up hurdles way later in in the game than most so that was like a whole new like un unlock level to to like my ability and to track and field like I didn't know nothing about hurdles so it was just like something else to do and then I was actually good at it so I just kept progressing and building but then my junior year in college, by the time we got to regionals, I was like feeling super tired, super feeling um, super burnt out. I was just like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I don't want to be here. Like, this is just too much. Like, and it was literally right before the national championship. So it was the meet before nationals. And I was just like, like, I just couldn't get these thoughts out of my head. I'm just like, why am I feeling this way? But then I like got myself back together, locked in. And I was like, hold on, like we've trained way too much to give up now like you know we start training in September and it's late May and I'm like trying to be not want to do this and feeling type of way or whatever whatever so like I said it was a four-day meet so we ran like every other day so that off day that I had before the finals I was like like I said let's lock back in and if you want to quit if you want to do whatever whatever like do it after national or at this point, I had to do Olympic trials, too. So that was another thing. I was just like, I don't want to do this anymore. So we're at regionals, and I'm just like, we train way too much for this. So anyways, fast forward, I make it to nationals in both of my events, the 100 hurdles and the 400 hurdles. And I was just like, we train for this. Like, like this is not the, this is not the time to, to not want to do this, to check out and immensely not be there. So 
I ended up pulling through. Um, I became a two-time All-American, like, in two individual events that me. I got sixth place in the 100 hurdles, and then I got fourth place in the 400 hurdles. And that was, like, my first, like, individual, like, NCAA. I was, like, I'm fourth in the NCAA. Like, that was really big for me since it's my junior year. My junior year, and I've never – I've never had, um, I never became an All-American, like, individually. It's always been, like, relays. Um, And then, like, I was super happy. Like, I was like, all right, I love this again. I want to do this, whatever, whatever. But then, like, we had to stay in Oregon for three weeks, like, for two more weeks after that. So we ended up staying in Oregon for three weeks total. Like, did not go home, stayed in the same hotel room. Like, it was just, like, super hard. I was, like, back, like, oh, my gosh, I don't feel like doing this. Like, I've already done my job, like, in the collegiate season. Like, I'm ready to have, I'm ready to take a break. Like I spent my 21st birthday in Oregon mm. and I was just like, I don't want to do this at this point. Like I just want to take a break from it. So, I mean, of course I, I, of course I ran it's Olympic trials. I'm like, it's an experience, whatever, whatever. But I went out there. The first event that I had to do was a hundred hurdles. And I went out there and like, I just like, excuse my language. I have to ask it. Like, I didn't feel like doing I didn't feel like being the Messiah that everyone knew. I was mentally checked out. I was like, I just had my 21st birthday. Like, I'm just turned up. Like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be here. So I reflected back on that race, and I was like, like half, half-assing half something was never me. Like, that's never been me. That's not who I am. So although it didn't count towards anything, I still felt like I failed myself just having a gift and having the opportunity to be out there and just taking, taking that as – just like it meant nothing when so, it's some people's dream to make an Olympic trials and compete. I was just out there being lax a days ago. So I had to like take a step back and reflect. And I was blessed that I had another opportunity to run the 400 hurdles. And I ended up making it to the semifinals. Um, so I made it through the first round. I made it through two rounds out of three. And I was a little happier with myself because I actually went out there and tried and I told myself, like, the next time I go to another, like, major championship where, like, it's professionals there, I'm going to – it doesn't matter what you did in the collegiate season. The, the best collegiates continue to do great things after the after post-collegiate season. So, um, so yeah, like, that was, like, really mentally, like, where it was, like, the road bump where I was, like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore, like, my junior year. And I just think that it was my first year back from – COVID, like doing a whole entire season, which mm-hmm. is why I think it was just a lot. It was long. I was turning 21. Yeah. So after that, I was like, it was just, it was just a lot going on. So like I said, I had to reflect, looked in the mirror. I'm like, well, it wasn't really, it was, it wasn't really me. I just think it was the people who I was surrounding myself with. Like I was like one of the best in my friend group, like in terms of track. So everyone was already done. I wanted to be outside. I wanted to party. I wanted to have a good time. Like I said, I was turning 21. So it was just like I wanted to do everything else but focus on the goal at hand. And it was just a lesson that needed to be learned um, because the grass isn't always green on the other side, which is what I've learned. It's like, yeah, we get tired sometimes. Yeah, we don't want to compete all the time. Like it's mentally draining. But at the end of the day, when I take a break from track, I'm, I'm ready to be back at practice. And of course, when you're living in it, it's like, ah, I could be doing something else. But of course, like when something is taken away from you, you wish that you can do it. You wish that you can be there. So like I said, I did a lot of reflecting and I looked in the mirror and I'm just like, like, if I have the opportunity and ability to wake up every day and do what I love and be like, continue to stay healthy and inspire people, why not be the best me until like literally I can't anymore? And it's honestly something that's just in me like up until this point that just doesn't allow me to be like average. Like when I'm at practice, like I can complain about a workout, but when my coach say three, two, one, it's just like, I have to give it my all. It's just something in me that just hasn't told me to stop yet. So I pray it doesn't, it doesn't burn out no time soon, but that's just where I'm at. I just wrapped you up for a good minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's, I mean, it's all good. It's your interview. It's all good. You, you know, it's, 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 it's it's your spotlight but i mean i think it's really good to hear like just the honesty right and it's the same it's the same honest you that that we get on your youtube channel you know what i'm saying but uh i i think that this is that this is good to hear because I, I think too often in society even now like it's easy to see people who are elite in whatever they do the, the best at right and then we just assume that they don't go through bumps they don't go through challenges they don't go through struggles but 
I mean, you letting us know that it's, it's the real deal. This is this is what it look like. Grass ain't green on the other side, right? For sure. So, yeah, yeah. So I want you to walk us through, one, what you have on your refrigerator, and then two, that leading to you breaking the collegiate record, right? The set, what, the, the 7.75 in the 60 meter. Talk to us, Messiah. Talk to us. Break that thing yeah. down for us. So the first, so a couple of things that I have on my refrigerator is my goals. Like I have pictures of myself, like on my sheet. It's like pictures of like me competing. Cause I feel like my goal sheet from the previous years was just a little too dry. Like I just used to like have it up, but I never really looked at it. But like the pictures that I have on there are actually pretty, pretty cute. So I'm like, this is a, this is a good goal sheet that I would love to look at every single day. So I have my goals and then my dad, he wrote me a nice, like he typed me up a nice like little like a uh, word doc and printed it out. And it was like really nice, really inspiring. Just tell me how he's so proud of me, whatever, whatever. That's on my refrigerator as well. And then I just have a couple cars, pictures of me and my man. And that's pretty much it. I need to get more, more um, refrigerator magnets because I actually want to be like one of those moms when I have kids that like have like the whole refrigerator, like just like a whole bunch of pictures and stuff um just decked out so that's just like the four little th things that's on my refrigerator and then like going over to the collegiate record um 60 hurdle race i mean it was just amazing for one like by the grace of god it just showed how like when you really put your mind on something that you know it could really happen and when you truly believe it'll come to pass and it's just amazing because like it just, I don't want to say like I already knew it was going to happen, but like I said, when you truly believe that it's, that it's possible, like it's going to eventually happen. And it's so weird to say that. It sounds so cliche, but I mean, it's the truth. And I didn't have no time in mind. I just knew I told my coach in the beginning of the year, I was like, you know, like as easy out, like as consistent as, as I was running seven, nine last year, I feel like that's going to be me running seven, eights this year. And then just have that opportunity where I run seven seven and it just be that so like of course when i ran 788 the week before um you could probably see my reaction it wasn't like i was like oh like that was a pr which is crazy because my pr before that was 793 so then i ran 788 on our kentucky track which is like not a good surface the energy is like okay it's not nothing crazy so i seen it and of course i was happy i was content i was like okay we're moving in the right direction and then the week after we went to Texas Tech. I ran 8, 10 in the first round. I felt super high over the hurdles. I was like, dang, this distance feel a little long. What's going on today? Because, like, that's always been my struggle. Like, I've always had – I've always, I'm always, like, either super high over the hurdle or, like, I'm just, like, bounding in between the hurdles. And the only thing that's really, like, holds me down in terms of hurdles is, like, my foot speed. So, I was like, all right, first round out the way. I seen, like – um another girl from like a different team had like ran a faster time than me but i'm like i already know like i have faith in my ability i have faith in my process and in my training so i'm like at this point in my career like i, I want to race everybody i want to step to whoever because i'm so confident in my ability it's like like step to me and and i want you to challenge me you know so going over to that race um nothing nothing really felt like out of out of the out of the out of the usual, I just did what I did, and I can't even lie to you. I, re I barely remember the race. Like, I just remember before I put my head down, because I always look at the hurdle, and then I, like, put my head down before, like, we get into the set position. And I was like, I think, like, the, the thought just crossed my mind. Like, what if I break the collegiate record? Or, like, something like collegiate record, like, it kind of, like, passed my mind. But, like, when you're, like, getting ready to run, it's like, it's like you're not really remembering, but you are. It's like a lot going on. Well, it shouldn't be a lot going on. Like, that was the one thought that crossed my mind. That's what I mean to say. So if anyone's listening out there, it shouldn't be really much on your mind before you compete. I'm sorry, but that is the one thought that crossed my mind before I put my head down. And then the gun went off. My start was great. I just was getting down. And I finished. I looked at the time, and I was like, I just, like, look back because I'm always, like, afraid that they're going to convert the time. Like, it's going to be a fast time, and then they convert it and be like, 7-7, seven, seven, whatever, and then it goes from 7-7 seven, seven to 7-9. Seven, so that's how the clock works sometimes. So I just kept turning around, and when I seen that it was just staying at 7-75, I was like, like, I literally just started crying because it just, 
I feel like I've never had the spotlight on me. I feel like I've never been the one. I feel like I'm always, I've always worked so hard, like every single year to be the best and it's just never come. Like, so it just felt like finally, that was like my one moment out of all the years that I've been running track that like one of the goals that I have written down, like, like it has finally come true. So it was just like, like I was just, if you see my Instagram post, it literally, I think I literally started off by just like, wow, like, like, you know, it's so much that I have to say, but I have no words to describe it because it's just, it's just amazing. You know, like, like I said, when you truly believe in yourself and truly believe in your process and have faith in your plan, there's nothing that like you can't do. And that's what I've told everybody because no one's seen this coming, but I did, you know, it's like, but that's why it's not, it's not for you to to look to other people and look at other people's processes because then you just start comparing yourself to everybody else. Like last year, I was just like, oh, this person's so talented. This person's so talented. And when you start saying that other people are talented, it's just like you're telling you're telling yourself that they got something that you can't do. So I stopped doing it. I'm like, I'm just as talented. I'm the one. I'm great. I'm the best. Like telling yourself, speaking speaking life to yourself. And like I said, it's, it's all coming to pass because – like I said, no one, no one seen this coming, but I did, and my coach did, and the times and everything that I was doing in practice just, it just showed that I was gonna run fast. But I mean, my coach, he said the week before, he was like, "You have what it takes to break the collegiate record," and he's been saying that for about two years now. So he's seen it even before I've seen it, and he just knows. So, yeah. <laughs> Talk your stuff. I'm her. You know what I'm saying? I'm her. You know. <laughs> Not for real. You can't give nobody. Like I told everybody, like you can't get nobody a one up on you. It's, but you have to be the. You have to be your biggest support, and you have to believe in your plan and your process and in yourself more than anybody. Like I feel like at a certain point, my coach had more faith in my ability than I had in myself, and that switched right around. Like once I really started to understand when you have true confidence in yourself, and you truly believe in yourself and what you do, especially when you really working hard and you going to go out there and give somebody some chips because of their name. No, like I work way too hard to, to give somebody this just because of who, who they say they are by time. Just because nah. <laughs> talk that confidence talk. I mean, it, it, it is really funny because I think it's uh, like, like pistol Pete or somebody like that basketball player. He said, the harder I work, the, the better I get, the harder I work, the luckier I get. And I mean, it's just one of those things when you have put in that time, you you should walk around with a different level of confidence because it's not like arrogant or cocky. It's just, it's just real. Right, exactly. 100%. Yeah. 100%. That's the thing, like, I was having a conversation with my mom and she was like, it's okay to, to be, of course, like confident. And I had like a big, not even debate, rebuttal, none of that. But like in high school, like people always would tell me that like, like people, honestly, the people were hating, but they just felt like I was cocky because I was doing things that they weren't doing and on track, for instance. Like, and I'm like, I'm not cocky at all. Like cocky is, is literally saying I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm not doing this because I'm better than you. But I just had a sense of confidence that 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 didn't didn't align well with who they were and their insecurity so I'm I'm super confident and anybody that's close to me I mean even Darcy like she knows like super super most personable person that you'll probably ever meet and super humble but very confident you know and that's good that's a good thing to have because once you have that confidence taken from you then people can say anything about you people can can just they can tell too you know so it's it's all about the confidence that you hold within yourself and yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, and shout out to y'all's relationship too. Cause I mean, for one, I, I get to see you two compete at different schools, but y'all was on the same team at one point. That's a that's a scary monster right there. Yeah. Cause yeah, every day. Man, I, I'm I'm just saying because I'm every time I look up because I was talking to her uh, the other day and I was like every time I see you you breaking another record and then you Messiah you y'all cranking them out like it's just y'all record breakers I don't know yeah um, I'm so proud of her too like she's doing so great she's thriving for real that's like really my sister. <laughs> respect though respect because i mean it it, it 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 takes it takes a di it takes a different type of individual 
not just to celebrate their own accomplishments, but be able to celebrate others. So kudos, kudos to y'all with that because it's not yeah, easy. That's a, like Darcy has always been one of those individuals who who like like it doesn't matter. She she didn't have a good race or she had a bad day. Like she's still supporting, still on my side, telling me how great I am, telling me how great I did, and I same same to her like Darcy has beat me in a race before like no knock to her but like and I still because we we're friends you know like of course it's competition when we get on the track it's 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 just respect it's like track is more important than I don't want to say like our relationship but we both understood the goal and we didn't let the goal determine or hinder the relationship that we had off the track so I'm just super glad that I left college, like, well, leaving college with someone that I consider, like, my family. And it's truly a blessing to have, like, someone, especially, like, Darcy, like, on my side and on my team. Because that's the thing, everybody doesn't want the best for you, but I know that she is a real one, like, to the end. For sure, for sure. Shout out to, shout out to Darcy Khan up there at uh, Howard at the Howard University. You know what I'm saying? So shout, shout out to her. Shout out to her. <laughs> so, so let's take a slight pivot and and let's talk about this about about you becoming a gym shark athlete. Like, how did that even come all together? Because you know, with with, with nil, of course, the past couple of years nil is blown up, right? Or or at least it seems like it's blown up. But but just talk us through like how how this uh, agreement came into place or whatever you call. It. How, how do you what, what what do you call it? Help me out, Masai. What do you call it? Yeah. I don't even know. Yeah. An agreement, a sponsorship, a partnership. I feel like they all kind of mean the same thing. And it's actually almost been a year since the first time that they contacted me. They contacted me when I was at SEC Indoors last year. And it was so weird because I was like, I want to be in a commercial. I want to do this. I want to do that. Like I said, something like that. Like I said, the things that I just be speaking just come to pass. Like that's why you got to be careful what you say out your mouth because God going to give you what you ask for. Like, and I'm real careful and cautious about the things that I asked for. The things that I said have never happened to me because you know, it, it's going to come. That's why I keep my mouth real closed in situations. And I speak life over myself because, like I said, it just be happening. But anyways, um, they emailed me. And it said, like, it was like, uh, a regular, like, email. Like, hey, like, we want to get on a call. And it said that it was from Gymshark. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, mom, I don't know. I didn't know what they were offering. I didn't know what. Like, I didn't know anything. I just seen that they wanted to get on a call with me. I was just like, hey, like, Gymshark is a big brand. Like, I'm ready to talk to them. What are they talking about? Darcy was in the room too, um, crazy to say. And we just got on a call. They introduced who they were. They introduced like what like the goal was that they that they see me doing within their company. And we just talked over the course of March, like the, over the course of like two months to truly understand and negotiate and get the price that I was I wanted to get paid for all the posts and everything that I was gonna be doing within the contract. Um, so it was like a lot of communicating with attorneys and cause like, you know, when, especially signing like a year long, cause I'm signed with Gymshark for a whole entire year. Um, so I signed with them in May, right before I went to USA's. So of course, I guess a lot of, um, negotiation back and forth, wanting this to be changed, wanting that to be changed, different things like that. So like I said, after two months of negotiating all that, um, I ended up signing with them and it's pretty much just like. They're, like I'm on their roster, but they also get to say that Messiah Russell is a part of our team, too. They signed three major NIL athletes. It's me, um, Jordan Charles. She was like an Olympic silver medalist in the gym, um, as a gymnast. She goes to UCLA. And then Jada Williams, she's, um, she's, a, she's about to be a rising uh, freshman at Arizona State um, University. And she plays basketball. So I was like one of three nil athletes that they picked and i was like wow like out of all the athletes that is that are in the ncaa like they picked me um because I, at one point i was really nervous about signing with them just because like i said it was a year-long partnership like i'm not able to wear like nike unless it's kentucky gear like the only time i'm able to wear i'm, I'm able to wear like nike is when i'm traveling with kentucky i'm wearing like a uk logo but other than that like i cannot wear it's just like i'm i'm a like a sponsored professional athlete so I was like, what if I'm not able to do this? What if I'm not able to post what I need to post because I'm traveling? Like, I didn't want it to just be too much. And I'm just like, God is not going to put this opportunity in your face and in your way if you're not ready for it. And it's the biggest and honestly the best partnership that I probably ever signed just because they're so family-oriented. 
they truly care about you as a person. Like if I just, I mean, I've never had this issue where I like I've come short on like the certain posts that I have to post for the month. But just to say, if I'm like, yo, I'm really stressed. Like, is it okay if I just post three times next month instead of two, just to make it up? But right now, I'm just not in a good mental space. Like, they will be a hundred percent down with what I'm saying. Like, they truly care about you as the person. And it's a really, really young team, which I also like. Like the owner or the CEO of the company, he's like 31 years old or 30, and all the um, all the reps that like work with each athlete are like literally no older than like 25, 26 years old. So it's like the people who I'm, who are in charge of me, they're like real cool. They're like, hey, you want to do this? You want to do that? You want to? You want to go here? You want to go here? Just send me this. Like, it's so lackadaisical, but it's like, of course, as long as you're handling your business and doing what you got to do, like, everything is just cool, clean, cut, and it's just a vibe. Honestly, I love being with Gymshark. Like I said, they treat me so good. They literally bought me flowers when I broke the collegiate record. They sent me, like, a little bouquet with with a nice note. They bought me a birthday cake with a little Gymshark logo. They congratulated me um, at USA's, like, when I made the final and did really well there. And then um, they also, uh, they sponsor their athletes. Like if I wanna set up a camp or if I want them to send me some extra clothes to do for my giveaway when I just hit 30K, like they're all about helping and supporting their athletes, which is exactly why like I love being a part of a brand and a team that like, like I said, cares about you more than just of who you are. Of course, you gotta handle the business because that's what you signed a contract for, but it's like a two-way partnership. It's not like, it's not a symbiotic thing. What is it? A symbiotic relationship? I, what's the one where it's mm-hmm. one-sided? Yeah. One-sided well, uh, uh, I don't know the one that's one-sided. I just know the other one is yeah. sim. Yeah. sim- it's, it's a symbiotic relationship. <laughs> yeah. I think that that's right. But I don't know the one-sided one. It's not one-sided. It's very much um, a two-sided and symbiotic relationship. I got you. I got you. I, I was trying to find it. I was trying to do my Googles and try to find a, uh, find a definition. <laughs> of a one-sided relationship <laughs> but i what couldn't did they say? They I, I, I couldn't i couldn't find it i was trying my, my 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 twitter fingers ain't as good as they used to be i couldn't find it i couldn't <laughs> find it but yeah i think that's uh i, I think that's really dope and i think um j- just from hearing you share that and knowing that you know the student athletes that hear this episode they might be like well how could i get my first sponsorship my first deal i think just sh- you sharing what you shared i think uh one of the biggest pieces i extracted from what you shared is the fact of like partnering with brands that really align with you as you know as, in terms of like your mission and your focus but also making sure that you know make, making sure that you on the same page because you just said you just said y'all was negotiating for two months and that's not no you know that, that's that's not a short period of time well i mean right. depending but i mean just to yeah. make sure just to make sure that you know everything makes sense for you and for them so yeah and that's the thing. A lot of people always have a lot of questions about, like, how did I become a sponsored Gymshark athlete or what do I need to do to become um, a sponsored Gymshark athlete and things like that. Well, I feel like, of course, like I tell everybody, it's all about building your platform and building who you are as a person. Like, no, I mean, of course, like every brand, like, they're not just going to sign you because you're ne- of who sometimes they will. They won't just sign you just because of my name is Masai Rosa. Of course, I had to put some flesh on to who Masai Russell is in terms of the accolades, in terms of my followers, in terms of everything that I've done up until this point, like partnerships didn't just fall out of the sky because my name is Masai and I'm pretty, you know what I'm saying? So of course you have to do things and you have to be a marketable person. You have to be um, business oriented. You have to, you have to be um, just a great person to work with, of course. And like I said, have a platform because I know Gymshark is a brand that they do work with small creators too. Cause I'm not even considered a large creator in terms of the people who they have signed, but they just seen something in me that they can build off and they can monetize of course. And if you do the same, build your platform and become someone that a brand wants to see you in their clothes. then I'm pretty sure that the same could happen for you too. That's real talk. That's real talk. We we about to get ready to transition to our uh to, to our to our rapid fire. But before we get there, what's one question that nobody has ever asked you that you wish they would? Hmm. Uh, that's a good question. 
maybe like what a, what no one has ever asked me what event what I do outside of the events that I've already done um they just asked me about the events you know the races that I've take place and that have taken place in but no one has ever asked me like if you could do one event outside of your main events what would you do <laughs> if you could do one event outside of your outside of your main event <laughs> what event would you do Probably long jump or pole vault. <laughs> really? I just want to try it. I just want to try it because it just, it. I don't want to say it looks fun, but I'm pretty sure you definitely get some wild adrenaline rush, like like coming coming down, because they be high, like just falling down on your back. <laughs> and long jump, I just think I have, a, I think I could be a really, really good long jumper if I got good technique because I'm fast. And I played like in a long jump pit before, like all some joking stuff. And I was actually kind of solid. I just don't have no like good takeoff because of course I don't train for it. But I got out there and to never have done it before. I'm like, I'm not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And I shoot, I tried long jump. I guess I wasn't fast because Masai, when I tell you I was so trash in that pit, <laughs> I was so trash. <laughs> In, in anyway, anyway, like, you gotta you gotta be bad and strong, like to be to be like really good. Cause I mean, some of the guys are kind of skinny out there, but like it's just like a good mix of both. I feel like makes it just all come together. Yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So now now we're gonna we're gonna transition to our we're gonna transition to our rapid fire segment. This is where it's gonna ask you some some fun questions and. You know, just give the people uh, a chance to just see a different side of you or just see a little bit more about you. Masai, are you ready? Yes, I am. All right, here we go. Here we go. What's your uh, go-to pre-race song? Um, Probably something Rod Wave, which is insane. Probably like Rod Wave Freestyle or... um. It was just a song of something, little baby. I can't think right now because I know I'm on the spot. But it's weird to say, like I said, Sam Raw Wave, Lil Baby, and Drake. Those are my three. Who's the best dancer on the team? On your track team? Me. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, who, who's who's the funniest on your team? Um, probably Robbie or. Um, Karima Davis. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. What's your What's your favorite track to run on? Clemson uh, University and um, Arkansas. Okay, okay. Which do you prefer, books or podcasts? Podcasts, hundred percent. Give me your top three podcasts. I don't have a top three. Actually, actually, um, B Simone, her, she's the one I watch. Um, no one canceled me for this, but I've seen some Andrew Tate ones. I'm just like in the middle with him. I don't really know. It's like some of the stuff he says is true. Some of the stuff is like way out of there. So he's two that I've, that I've came across. And three um i don't know her name but she she does like a lot of famous people <laughs> i'm more of a vlog girl <laughs> oh okay okay who, who, are you, who are your favorite vloggers me monet and libby you did say that that's fair enough at least you're consistent at least you're consistent see that that wasn't difficult at all that wasn't difficult at all uh now now this is the part where we took we're down to the winter circle of the week so who's one person or you can say a couple it's fine but who's who are these people or this individual you're saying i think this person is really dope and you're co-signing that i should interview them next who would that person or persons be just because they doing dope stuff or yeah it would be two people of course i can never just pick one it would be the abby steiner um because I don't know if you know her, but she's literally amazing. Um, we came into college together. She has done everything that anyone could possibly do on a collegiate track and is continuing to do great things on the pro circuit. So she's amazing, great person, great athlete. 
um, and just a true testament of faith, hard work, discipline, and your dreams can really come true. And to be Robbie Springfield, um, who's my boyfriend, because he literally has gone through so many ups and downs. Like he started track when um, he was like a senior in high school. So as he came into college, he's literally been learning about track, learning about his body. His body has been changing, but um, has literally learned everything about this sport as he's trying to still become the best him. And he has so many trials, so many tribulations, and he's literally had surgery, and he has come back even better. And it takes a lot for an individual to come back even better after um, an injury, and it really shows, like, the true dog in you. Like, if you come back after surgery, even better, like, you you – you have something different that's within you. So definitely those two people because they're just both true inspirations in my life. And it just showed me that, like if someone could get through something so hard, like I could get something I can get through something that's like minuscule compared to, you know, what they were going through. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then before we get to the the, the final the final part of the show, which is gonna be the Dear Student Nathy segment, uh, Masai, go ahead and share with people uh, how they can find you, follow you, stay connected with you, and you know follow your journey and everything like that. Yeah, so you can find me on all socials at Masai Russell M A S A I Russell R U S S E L L. It should only come up after Masai because it's not that many people with the name Masai. Um, and of course, I have kind of one and a half Instagrams. I just started a new Instagram channel. It's called More Messiah. So I just want to post like more pictures of like what I'm doing on a daily basis because I don't like to just post everything to my main page, but I can follow that if you want to. But just follow my main page. It's verified so you know it's me for real. My YouTube is Messiah Russell. Like I said, it'll come up. And then Twitter, Messiah Russell, TikTok, Messiah Russell. So it's real easy to find. So if you say you can't find it, I know you capping. <laughs> I ain't hard to find, huh? I ain't hard to find. <laughs> and is it? You can find me at any time of the day, which is not always the best. That's about when, where you come. <laughs> true story, true story. Uh, but uh, Masai, I, I appreciate you taking the time and stopping by. I appreciate you taking the time to, you know, rock with us and, and just share uh, your heart, share your story. Um, share your wins and your transparency with the people but go ahead please take us home and go ahead and close out with the with your final words for our dear student athlete segment where you can have the opportunity just to share and impart any wisdom that you would like to to uh, a current student athlete you got the mic well first off um like i said in the beginning or kind of just throughout like it's sometimes when we're on social media, it's really hard to not compare yourself to other people's journey and other people's processes. But, you know, what God has for you is only meant for you. So looking at somebody else's journey and looking at somebody else's path is it's hard, but it's a discipline that you have to have within yourself to become your best self. And at times it was hard for me because I felt like I wasn't I was doing everything possible and my dreams were still not being fulfilled. I always still felt like I was second, third, or fourth, and I just worked so hard for everything that I thought I worked for, and it just never came. So um, finally, like I said, God's showing me that truly having faith in him and believing in my process and having faith in my ability, all of that ended up coming to pass. And it's just the beginning. It's just it's just the, the start of was to truly come through, of course, having faith and confidence in yourself. And like I also said, never count yourself out. Always believe in yourself. Always believe in your process. And even if people leave you along the way, you know, I just heard something that Tyler Perry said the other day. He said, like, a rocket, they have, like, I don't know what it's called that surrounds it, but when it gets to certain altitudes, they fall off. It's not that those people were bad people, but it's just everyone can't go with you on your way up to the top. So some everyone's not a bad person, but some people just can't 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 go to the highest of heights that you're that you're on the path of going to. So, you know, it is what it is. It's life, you know, continue to love, respect and um wish some people well. But at the end of the day, um everyone can't go with you to the top. It's no hard feelings. It's it's nothing personal. But at the end of the day, if you 
are trying to make it to the top, you have to let certain things go. And like I said, always believe in yourself. Always have faith in your ability, your process. Trust God. Be disciplined. And don't expect for any thing to just happen out of nowhere without well, putting the work in. Like, you have to work. You have to work hard. You have to you have to work day in and day out. Like, nothing just falls out of the sky because of just because. Yeah, that's all I got to say. Um, work hard. And I promise that your dreams will truly come to pass. But boom, y'all, there, there it is. There it is. Uh, man, shout, shout out to Masai for taking the time just to, you know, share with us a, a little bit uh, on this episode. Be sure if you enjoyed the content, be sure to leave a comment down below if you're watching on YouTube. And uh, also make sure to subscribe to the channel. And family, this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree. Period. What he said. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you.